Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and today I'll be making a smoked pork belly with grilled pineapple pico. What we're doing today is a really simple preparation of the pork belly. All we're gonna do is trim it up a little bit, put a little seasoning on there and get it on the smoker so that we can get some really nice smoke flavor on it and then break it down so it's super tender. So this pork belly has already had the skin removed which is exactly how we want it today. All we're gonna do is look around, make sure that the butcher didn't miss anything. There's not any uh, bones or cartilage sticking out, anything hanging off that's just gonna burn up. But this is in pretty good shape already, so I wouldn't really mess with it too much. Now here on the fat side, I'm just gonna give this some scores so we have a place for that rub to hang out and really just uh, impart as much flavor as possible into the pork belly. So you can see we're really not going too far down. It's just enough for that rub to have something to hold on to. And speaking of getting that rub to stick, we're also gonna use a little bit of binder. Now this is the Green Aid uh, Tangy Green Chili Sauce, but you could just use oil, you could use mustard, whatever you have, whatever you wanna use is fine. That little layer is gonna give our rub something to stick to. And the rub we're using today is a new rub from uh, Oak Ridge. This is their smoky chili lime. And as the name implies, it's got some smoked chilies in it, which is really what I'm going for. And a little bit of brightness from the lime in there as well. So great savory flavors, great earthy chili, a little bit of smokiness to it because those chilies are smoked ahead of time. I've been trying to put this on just about everything from fish to pork to chicken, and I really enjoy it. And do the exact same thing with the other side. A little bit of green aid. And then we don't need to score this side because we have plenty of meat exposed and the rub will actually hold on to that meat better than it does on fat. Now I'm gonna go pretty liberal with the seasoning here. All right, well, let's give that a few minutes to set up. Once it looks nice and moist on the surface, it's ready to go to the smoker. Now, what we're smoking on today is the Yoder Smoker's YS640 pellet grill. We've got it set at 225 degrees, and I've got some cherry and pecan pellets loaded in the hopper. All right, so the pork belly's going in right here, dead center on the second shelf. And I want to talk briefly about where we're placing the meat and why. I get a lot of questions asking just that. Why did you put it in the center of the second shelf, or, or why did you put it here or there. Honestly, when we're cooking one item at a time, I just like to put it right in the center. One, because it's easier for you guys to see at home when it's on the grill. Two, because I know that the smoke is moving all the way around that really well, so it maximizes that smoke flavor. And that's not to say that you wouldn't get great smoke flavor on the bottom shelf as well. You just gotta pay a little bit more attention. If I wanted to pack that thing full, I'd pack it full, and then I'd rotate stuff around to make sure that there's not a piece of meat that stays directly over the firebox the entire time, because there is gonna be some radiant heat coming off that diffuser. It's as simple as that. I hope that that clears things up for some of you who've been asking. For now, we're gonna let this pork belly smoke away. I'll come and check on it in about three hours, but I don't expect it to be done at that point, but we wanna check for color and progress. We're three hours into this cook, and I wanna give you guys a peek so you can see how this is progressing. So obviously, this is not the fat cap side. Fat cap's down here, starting to render down on the bottom here. We're beginning to get some really nice red color on the top, a little bit of browning, but this has got quite a ways to go. We'll be back to check on it in about another hour. We're full five hours into the cook now, and this belly is looking really good. It's taken on plenty of smoke flavor, and it's ready to be wrapped. Love the color we've developed on the outside here. Sort of a dark red, slightly brown, kind of mahogany color. And that bottom side, that fat's just rendering away, super soft. Now I'm going to wrap this to finish it because it's really going to help to break down and make our pork belly super tender. Now just before I get this wrapped, I'm going to add a little bit of our carne. This is the eight second ride from Cattleman's. Just because I want a little bit of heat on this, a little bit extra bite, a little bit extra burn. 
And I'm gonna wrap this just as tight as I can. We don't wanna leave any room for air to create steam and steam off that bark we've created. But what's gonna happen now is as the juices from the pork belly start to cook out and the fat renders down even further, it's going to begin to sort of braise in its own liquid. So you get this really flavorful fatty braise that's encompassing the entire piece of meat while at the same time breaking it down so it's super tender in the end. All right, so back onto the second shelf and at this point I'm gonna crank this pit up to 325 degrees. I'm impatient, I don't wanna wait all day. It's already been five hours, right? I bet in another hour or so, this thing should be pretty tender. That's been just about 45 minutes wrapped and this thing's probing pretty tender. It's reading just over 200, so I think that we're just about ready to pull this thing off. Oh yeah, look at all that fat that's rendered out in the bottom. And then very little resistance. And you slide that probe in there. Reading it, 210 degrees right there in the dead center. Probably closer to 200, yep, 202 in this thicker part. So that is plenty tender. We've allowed that fat to really break down. We're gonna pull this off the grill now. So we'll set this up for direct grilling. Take out the second shelf. We also want to take out this door to allow direct flame. And I'll also turn the temperature up to 425. Let's start by breaking down the pineapple and then we'll get into the rest of the ingredients for the pico. So what I want to do is cut this down into slabs, uh, kind of like you'd see rings, but we're not going to take the center out until we dice it up after grilling. Although first we've got to get the spiny outside part off. And just make sure you don't miss any spots like that one right there. That wouldn't be uh, very pleasant later on, so we're going to get rid of that. Cleaned up pretty nicely though. And then we'll cut Oh, half inch slabs, something around there. We don't want to cook the pineapple all the way through on the grill, but we do want to be able to get some good color on it. All right, I'm going to put just a little bit of pan spray down so we can avoid any sticking. We're only going to need about half of that pineapple for the pico, so you can either double everything else and have some leftover pico or just save the rest for another project. All right, let's see how we're progressing here. We're getting a little bit of grill marks on there. I wouldn't recommend closing the lid because we're just looking to get a little bit of char in here without totally softening up the pineapple. There we go, now we're getting the color we're looking for. We'll give these just another minute longer, and I think that's the right char ratio. You want some left uncharred and just a little bit of color. Of course, that's totally up to you how much you like. So let's get into some of these other ingredients. We're going to have a pound of heirloom tomatoes, just diced up. Now, of course, you could use any kind of tomato you want. Right now, this, these are the tomatoes we're getting the most flavor out of, which is why I want to use them in this pico. Speaking of pico, typically what a pico de gallo is made up of is tomatoes, onions, cilantro, and serranos, or in today's case, we're going to be using jalapenos in place of the serranos. Nothing traditional about putting pineapple in your pico, but that is our variation of it today. We want about four ounces of onion, which is going to be about a quarter of this big guy. And I like to dice this down pretty fine, but of course all of this is open to interpretation. Next we've got our cilantro. Mince down. Next we've got our jalapenos. And how much we use really depends just on the heat level on these. Those have got some good heat to them. We'll probably do 
a half cup or so. Now let's get some lime juice in there, probably about a quarter cup or so. That's a couple tablespoons. Probably could use just a touch more. All right, we'll give that a taste here in a minute and see where we're at. Also gonna kick this up just a little bit with our green aid green chili sauce. A little bit more tang and a little bit more heat. And of course we're gonna need some salt in there. I'm gonna be using this smoked salt today. We'll give this a mix and then see where the flavor's at. Mmm. Salt level's just right, so I'm not gonna add any more. Now we just gotta get that cooled off pineapple in here. So we're just gonna cut around the core and get rid of those, and then try to match the size that we've been going with for our tomatoes on the pineapple here. Wow, this is a really beautiful looking salsa. I'm excited just to the, what the char is gonna add to the pico. So it looks great on the pineapple. All right, so there it is. Our grilled pineapple pico, it's all coming together. bright and beautiful salsa. Mmm. Love it. It's so bright, so fresh. It's gonna go great with that fatty pork. This pico will actually get better if it sits for a while. So if you wanted to grill off your pineapple slices the night before and let it sit in the fridge, it'd be great the next day. It's been resting for a while now and it smells amazing. Look how super tender that is too. That's awesome. Get this thing out of here and slice it up. Boy, look at that. Super juicy. Beautiful. Look how tender that is. Just folds right over. The smell is amazing. Definitely pick up on just a little bit just a little bit of lime and I can I can tell there's some chili flavor going on in there as well. Wow, just juicy all the way through. I'm just gonna top this off with our pineapple pico. Let's dig right in. Oh man, just succulent, it's so juicy, just melts in your mouth. And I think that this pineapple pico is the perfect complement to that because it's so bright and fresh, really works well with the fattiness, the unctuousness of that that just coats your mouth. It's fantastic. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to thesauce.atbbq.com. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.